Money back. Money back. Money back. Ooh. Bitch, I'm making like a money back. Yeah. Money back. Uh. Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Invasion of Privacy by Cardi B. I was about to say, Invasion of Privacy, are we talking like the government invading us or something? I mean, that that title is kind of horrifying just in premise. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm not sure what to make of that title, to be honest. I mean, I think it could actually be a reference to a contrast between her previous career as a stripper versus her current career as a rap artist and basically framing it as she made money through stripping but that's not how she makes her money now so it should not be expected of her that's probably looking far more in depth than the actual answer but fair enough hey i'm trying to get as much as i can out of this album i mean it barely gave me anything so well that's because you weren't looking for a stripper i mean if you were looking for a stripper then no that's not true that's (laughs) that's that's wrong actually it's quite wrong now um actually cardi b has got a kind of kind of a strange almost you'd almost expect this to be like a villain's backstory because she was born she was born into extreme poverty um she was born in the south of bronx so not a good area typically and as she was growing up, she ended up being uh, basically inducted into into the Bloods, which is a really nasty street gang here in the States. So she went from that. And then by age 16, she got out. She's one of the few people that managed to get out of a gang like that. Huh. So that's pretty impressive. So kudos to her on that one. Um, from there, she went on to attend Renaissance High School for Musical Theater and Technology, which was a vocational school. And she then realized that she really enjoyed, you know, theater and singing and whatnot afterwards she then went to start working at a local supermarket in the lower manhattan which is once again in new york um she got fired from that job and her former manager told her that she just go work at a strip club which means she must not have been dressing appropriately when she was at work (laughs) as a guess just as a guess i mean she's obviously very attractive because if you haven't seen pictures of this of this nice lady she is very attractive so i could see how that would be a an option i guess for her and unlike most women who end up as a stripper, she used that money appropriately. She got herself out of poverty and out of domestic violence. She then was able to start putting herself through school, and she started getting herself elevated in life. Now, she did drop out of college, but that's after she had already created a bit of a kind of like a, a, a social media presence. So she was making money in other mm. ways. So she wasn't required to strip anymore. So she basically stripped her way out of a bad situation and into a good situation, which isn't the usual story. Usually people go into stripping and then they get into drugs and they get into much worse situations and then they end up in no better shape than they were to begin with. This is one of the few success stories for stripping. So yay stripping. (laughs) I mean, I don't know where to really go with that, but this is one of the few success stories where like, holy crap, someone actually went to college on a stripping career. Holy crap! Yay! And for a bit of context here, um, she's only 25 now. Yeah. So we're talking doing all of that in the span of nine years, which is impressive to say the least. Yes, because she got started in social media back in 2013, so about five years ago. So when she was 20. Yeah. When she was 20, she was pulling off the beginnings of a social media career straight out of being a stripper and then she didn't have to strip anymore because she had actually started getting gigs because she started going viral on like vine and instagram and places like that then in 2015 is when she started actually getting some songs and some of those songs actually got playtime nothing major but she got the beginnings of a music career in 2015 so once again at this point she's 22 22 and she's gone from the beginnings of a lifetime special. Yeah. Is what she was doing at this point. She was, it was one of those like sad stories like, oh, you know, I'm a single mother, but now I'm addicted to heroin and now my life has gone to hell. She was basically the beginning of that plot line. And then she said, yeah, this, I'm going to show my, let's make money and I don't have to do this anymore. And yeah. Kudos to her for doing that because it changed her life around. I am not saying that every woman should do that. It's not going to work for most women. This just worked for her and yeah! kudos to her. Yeah. So with that aside, 
from there, she's kind of just exploded here in the States. I know she really hasn't made it over your guys' neck of the woods from what I can gather. Uh, I don't think she's really gotten big in the in the UK, but over here in the States, she's exploded. Um, she was on SNL earlier this year. She did, uh, I believe, two songs when she was on stage. Um, she killed it. Everyone was there. She's become kind of a sexual liber- liberty icon for women in the States. So she's a big deal. I want to get this very very plainly across. Because of how open and vocal she is, it's a big deal that she's gotten to where she has. Because most women in her situation never get here. So I want to get that very much put across right now. This woman is incredible considering what she's accomplished in her and within the short amount of time she's been on this earth. Yeah. I mean, she's a, she's an outspoken feminist. She's a, She's basically talked about how difficult it is to actually get to where she's at doing what she's done like for instance on vine and on different things she's impressive uh her and her ancestors yes when they came crawling out of the primordial (laughs) ooze sorry her family line is actually from a big from a mixture of uh, dominican and trinidadian so she's got an interesting mix there Mm. And then, obviously, she came from uh, from Bronx, which is New York. So she's got that kind of New Yorker accent, along with her thick, uh, her thick, uh, you know, accent from her grandmother, which would be uh, Trinidadian. So she's got kind of an interesting sound to her when it comes to accents. And you'll notice I'm avoiding the album for as long as I can because I'm trying to make Edmund here slowly spasm. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get him so he can't talk because I know at this point he's frothing at the mouth. <laughs> And now I turn everything over to Edmund. Edmund, please tell us everything you wish to say in as few words as possible, preferably less than 20. (laughs) It's really frustrating because with everything that I've looked up, with everything I've researched, everything I've found out about Cardi B, I would so have loved to be able to say, "I, I like this album, but... Okay, here's the thing where you come down on rap albums. At least from my perspective, you've got to take them in two contexts. One is, do they work lyrically? And the other is, do they work musically? So I'm going to be approaching it from two different perspectives. And the only perspective I have is, is it as bad or is it better than the last album we did at Shinedown? Because Shinedown is now the new epitome for bad albums we've done together. So that's the only metric I'm, I'm applying for this album is, is it better than Shinedown was? So that's how I'll be going forward with mine. So from well, let's, let's, let's discuss this. Okay. Um, I will admit, I found this album to be a chore to listen to more so than Shinedown. See, I don't agree. After after having pushed myself through Stockholm Syndrome <laughs> with Shinedown, having to have listened to it, I think I said I listened to it like 13 times from the back, like which that. is about right. I, I was I really did, and I really wanted to like that Shinedown album, and I just couldn't force myself to. This was not nearly as much of a chore. I just popped it in, listened to it. I laughed a lot because, um, well, she screams <laughs> more often than I think I scream the word uh, the. <laughs> I mean, she really does. She says pretty much every swear word I've ever heard before, and she uses it. She uses them as adjectives. Like I've never heard, I've never heard "meh" as an adjective before. Like she, she screams every obscenity you can imagine, and then she screams more. And it's 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 almost comical because it's like she's trying to paint like the world with swear words. And okay. it, why not? So. Yeah, I just, I can't believe the just level that she throws these words around. It's like an art form. It's, it's, it's beautiful in that nobody else has ever quite been this vulgar before. I swear, it should just be, the name of the album should just be <laughs> That should just be the name of the album. Just that. Just <laughs> Um, I just, here's the thing. Where I come from it. I felt like I was listening to the album version of watching a series of Deadwood. <laughs> now that's an image. <laughs> I mean, I... That's, that's a beautiful image is what that is. Thanks, Edmund. I, I appreciate that. I mean, for clarity, I hate Deadwood. 
<laughs> Aww, but Deadwood is beautiful. Deadwood is life. Yeah, and Shrek is the prettiest girl in the universe. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. <laughs> Oh god, I can never ever say those words again. <laughs> that video is horrifying. <laughs> yeah, like I I just I I don't really hate this album. I'm not going to say this is the best album I've ever heard because that's not true. I mean, mm. It isn't. It's not my style of music. I'll I'll admit I've never really been a big fan of rap. But this wasn't bad. Like, I didn't listen to this the whole time going, where's the next button? There were a couple times where that did happen, where I was like, okay, I've heard this song. I've heard enough of this song. I'm going to skip to the next one, because at this point, I'm just going to end up feeling like I'm going to have to go through Stockholm Syndrome again. <laughs> but it wasn't It wasn't like I was really ever praying for the next button to be pressed, like I was with, with Attention, Attention. Jesus Christ. Oh God! I still I'm, I still have nightmares about listening to those songs. Uh, I, oh. Okay, um, I'm going to outline the songs that I can outright say that I did like. Because as strange as it might sound, despite the fact that I found a lot of this album to be interminably dull and finding it, to be honest, quite <laughs> insulting to both my taste and my intelligence at times. I found the propensity towards utilising and Meh. as punctuation marks muddying the overall intent of the album. Despite those misgivings, admittedly they are quite big misgivings, <laughs> there are songs on the album that I do like. Uh, be careful, I did quite like because it has a nice beat that utilizes some of the trinidadian sounds and i really like that style of music okay so i was sort of like yeah i can get into this uh the lyrics are actually well crafted outlining the desire for someone actually worth cardi's time and energy correct but i i, I get your <laughs> point i do get your point yeah like that's honestly it's a good song it's it's got a good message it's got a like not all of her messages are what you'd expect something like this you know your typical rap, rap album tends to be either it borders on i've got money i'm awesome go <laughs> yourself you gave me money it's your fault i have this money i'm awesome take my gun to the face etc because that's kind of just why I, what i don't really like about a lot of rap mm. then you've got other ones where they talk about you know they came from absolute hell and it sucks and honestly we need to start fixing it which those are the good albums and then you got albums like this where it's kind of all over the map yeah where some songs are the first first group and other songs are the second group and it kind of it does blend the two, so it's kind of that. I like some of this. I like some of the positive messages, and I don't like some of the some of the negative messages. But I guess I have to accept both in life because everything's in different shades of gray. Yeah, yay, shades of gray. Like, um, I think kind of a microcosm of both concepts would be "I like it," because in all honesty, that song pisses me off for one key reason. Um, it samples I Like It Like That by Pete Rodriguez. Now, don't get me wrong, I have no issue with sampling. The issue I have is the fact that it overlays it with <laughs> dubstep and trap beats. And I find it completely unnecessary. It's sort of like you could just sample it and overlay it with the message that you're actually conveying which is the whole coming from rags to riches and having access to all this opulence and that's really good and i absolutely love uh j balvin on the song i mean i've i'm not going to say that such rappers don't exist but this is the first time that i've actually heard a rapper rap in spanish oh they've there we've got like okay because of where i live I hear that a lot. Honestly, I hear a lot of Spanish rappers because in California, especially in Southern California, it's difficult not to hear at least some of it. So Yeah, I mean, you've got a very high population of Spanish speakers there. Yeah, in various forms, whether it's yeah. uh, Central American, South American, etc. Um, even, you know, Southern North American, whatever you want to say. Basically, because of the fact there's such a, a high population of Spanish speakers, I do hear a lot of Spanish music, whether it's Spanish rap or... Um, you know, we'll hear a lot of like mariachi music from Mexico or we'll hear other forms of kind of blended music. So that's one of the mm -hmm. reasons why I don't think this album bothered me as much because I'm just used to it. It doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. 
I mean, hell, I love polka, and a lot of uh, a lot of Mexican music ends up blending very polka esque sounds into it, along with a lot more trumpets because mariachi music. Um, you got a lot more guitar as well, obviously because of Spanish guitar is very heavily present in their music as well. So I'm used to hearing that. That doesn't really bother me because I'm used to hearing it because half the radio stations are in Spanish. So you just kind of get used to, oh, that's cool. Mm. That's what that sounds like. All right, that's fine. Moving on. So. That never bothered me. Like when I heard you complaining about that blend, I kind of started laughing, going, "That's that's the complaint you got, really, really? That's that's where you're going to take your complaint. That's the best constructive criticism." Is I don't like how they blend it. That's very inappropriate to the way that I've got diabetes. I don't know why that came up, but apparently it does. So that's that's what I feel about whiny McWhiny bitch here. Is that he got all pissy about one one little artistic I, choice, and I think it's now, hilariously silly. Now, granted, that's, that's neither here nor there. Now, granted, when I was. Uh, discussing it initially. That was my initial opinion, and I have mellowed on it slightly, but I do still find it very difficult to get past the whole trap beat overlay, and it irritates... Well, I don't like trap beats in general, so it's going to annoy me anyway, but... Well, of course, because you're, you know, a stuck-up British person. That's that's all there is to it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, folks. All right, so I'm going to ask you a very silly question, and I want to hear your response. Go ahead. All right. So the Queen of England right. is an amazingly interesting woman, correct? You'll admit that in some form or another. I know you're not a big fan of the, of the royal family in, in, in principle, but at least she's been an interesting monarch. Okay. Your PM, on the other hand, is a giant collection of um, night crawlers and other, other horrors, correct? I feel like that's understatement, but yes. I, I'm still trying to keep it topical. I'm still trying to keep it topical. Do you believe that Cardi B would be a better prime minister than the than the person you have in, have presently in office? A sentient blancmange would be a better person in office. <laughs> <laughs> now, what would she have to go through to become the prime minister uh, prime minister of England? Is it possible for a foreigner to do so? With the exception of having to be over eighteen, we have literally no limitations on who can be prime minister. Okay, so I'd like to put this forward for Cardi B, who is, of course, never going to listen to this. <laughs> Please go to England because you're a strong feminist, because you've had a very interesting collection of life experiences. I strongly urge for you to go to England, first off, to spread your music, because obviously they don't really tend to hear it too much over there. Get over there. Get the word out. Talk about all the, all the things you care about, because her political views are pretty interesting, actually. Um, yeah, like she, she would be interesting because she's pushing for gun control. Right. Um, she absolutely hated Donald Trump and she was constantly spoken, uh, spoken against Donald Trump. That's not she surprising leans, considering her true, background. But she leans on, she leans on basically FDR's concept, which is essentially socialism. Right. So she's very heavy towards a socialistic network. All right. She believes in the concept of. Basically, she wants to try to try to push for what, what FDR had done, mm -hmm. as well as his wife, which was to try to try to get get people out of the same financial situation we presently have pushed, which is you know concept of capitalism, and push more towards like a socialistic world, as well as more equality across all all race and gender lines. Okay. So she is extremely forward thinking. She's an extreme leftist. And it would be interesting to see her try to run for political office in any country. She can't run for run for office here for another eight years because we have the requirement of uh, president being 35 years or older. So Cardi B, since you're not listening, but please listen anyways. <laughs> sorry, 10 years. She can't run for office for 10 years uh, as the president of the United States. Please go to England and run as the PM, as the M, uh, yeah, PM, the prime minister. Please run, run for office. Get the votes necessary and become the Prime Minister of England, because it would be <laughs> hilarious. Well, basically, to be able to become Prime Minister, she would need to be affiliated with a particular party, because... I'm sure she could find one of the parties to back her. Uh, Basically how, our, basically, how our system works is that you've got the MPs are voted for, and whoever has the most MPs in power gets to become Prime Minister. They select them. Yeah. yeah. So... So if she somehow was able to convince the Tories to back her... No, that would be... I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> there's no way on earth they would back her for it because, you know, she's now spoken feminist. So Ooh. she'd have to go with either the Liberal Dems or the Labor Party. Mm. And I doubt the Liberal, the liberal Dems are going to ever win ever again over there. So. Uh, they've got 12 seats at the moment or 11, yeah, something like that. They're not going to win. All right. So enough hypotheticals there. Uh-huh. Um, I, I didn't see. finish saying. Go ahead. Um, the other song that I did kind of like was Through Your Phone, which kind of carries on the discussion that Be Careful was was going over, only more of the discussion of concepts of distrust and abuse and the cyclical manner that that can occur in. Fair enough. So we're not going to give a score to this album because, well... We can already tell that you would give it a, a very poor score, and I don't feel like we should browbeat this album any mm. further. Because we've both been very careful about our words, even though I told him he could be as, as careless as he wished, as if you can't tell, I've been censoring everything we've been saying with the lovely sounds of Cardi B. <laughs> because she's just got some amazing sound effects. I, I love I love the various sound effects she has. So, let's see. Is there anything else you feel like you have to get off your chest with this album, or do you feel like you've said your piece? Um, the only thing I really have to say is that... I feel that had the beats that were laid down for this album been a bit more energetic, then I'd probably have been able to enjoy it more. Because that was the main problem I had throughout the album, is I was finding it very boring. So you're saying that she needs to fire her DJ and get a new DJ? Pretty much. Like, okay. like lyrically, a lot of... Her songs were brag raps, and I'm not too much of a fan of brag raps on the whole, but if you've got a good DJ behind them, and she's got very good verbal dexterity, and she's very quick off the mark, so if she's got someone really good with a nice, ferocious beat to back up what she's saying, then... It might have actually been her husband, husband, boyfriend, whoever, who actually was her disc jockey. Let me see if I can find out. So we can trash talk the gentleman who... <laughs> this uh, that would be unfair. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying because I'll admit the beats were a little... Lackluster. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're okay. Mm. Nothing amazing, just okay. So fair enough. I will I will admit that. I will, I will agree with your with your statement. But at the same time, I'm not that really offended by this. So if this was if I had to listen to this again, I wouldn't be twitching in the corner going, "Please put me out of my misery," like I was with the last album. So Cardi B, you've officially won me over as better than Shine Down. I don't really know if that's how you would score that out of five, but apparently it's better than Shine Down out of five. That's my score for this album. Your score, your score for the album is get a better DJ out of five. Okay, problem solved. We've now officially scored our <laughs> uh, newest album, Invasion of Privacy. Um, I don't think we've officially labeled where our next uh, next uh, song, our next album is going to be. Or did you did you officially want to announce what, which one we're going to do? Next? Um, next album. Uh, I'm Stone Temple Pilots. Just kidding. You will never get me to listen to those guys ever again. Oh, but they released a new album this year. I hate Stone Temple Pilots. Really? (laughs) 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 Don't tempt me. (laughs) Oh, God. I mean, if that's if that's if that's what you want to do, then I will accept that. If that's what you feel like making me listen to next. Nah, it came out a bit a bit too long ago for me to do that to you. Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> next time. Uh, oh, look. Dragon Force has put a new album out. <laughs> that noise. <laughs> hey, their guitarist is amazing. He only knows one song, but he's amazing. <laughs> and it's a 25-minute song, but that's Dragon Force. Uh, through the Fire and Fury, part 15. <laughs> it's Through the Fire and Flames. Wait. Oh my bad! I keep thinking Fire and Fury because of that stupid, the stupid book that got. Now released. you've got to remember talking about Trump. You've got to remember that even Dragon Force's titles are redundant. So through, because yeah. through the fire and flames. So through the f- fire and fire. Yeah, because hey, they want to get a very po- get the point across that there's f- <laughs> fire. All right. Um, this is gonna be so much fun to edit in her voice. Uh, we could do Roger Daltrey next. But he's like 95 years old. 
He's just gonna come out and be like, I'm sorry, I just walked down to the local <laughs> singing a song about Hey he- Okay, that's that's mean. That's mean. He's not that he's old. He's only seventy four, so he's four years older than Alice Cooper, something like that. No, Alice Cooper, and he's the same age as Donald Trump, another person who'd be interesting to see how it governed our country instead. Oh wait, he can't. He's British. <laughs> Damn it! Where the hell? Okay, Alice Cooper, run for president. <laughs> Actually, it would be kind of interesting to see his message. I, <laughs> Do you want your children to grow up like me? No? Then vote for me for president and I'll fix it. Actually, he has gone on record of not wanting to run for president because it's too much oh, of a for headache. For a variety of reasons. Yeah, he's actually intelligent enough to realize it's not an easy job. Mm. Unlike a certain somebody who ran for president and now has been freaking out because A, he broke the law, allegedly, and B, he is... He's an idiot and doesn't know that the president actually has a real job yeah. to do. So yeah, Coop, anyways, Cooper's all right, so. Cooper's philosophy regarding politics is that politics should not be mixed with rock music. Good point. I mean, oh god, if he got to be, if he became the president, he could do "Be My Frankenstein" on the on the on the White House lawn, though. Oh, that'd be so beautiful. He's getting a little old, though, so I don't think he's I don't think he's rocking as hard as he used to. <laughs> oh, my friend, you are so wrong. I saw him in concert. Well, not not on. St- oh, really? Oh, that's right. You did see him in concert. Yeah, recently, didn't you? November. He was. He still had all the energy he's ever had. But anyway, next album to review. Uh, Watching the Sky by Shepard. Whoever they are. Okay, so it's a blind bag. Yep. Got it. All right. Um, I apologize for any visuals that you see right now. I'm of three minds while we're recording this, and Lord knows what you're going to actually see, but whatever it is, I do apologize. And we love you. Thank you very much for listening. Cardiology is, of course, a very difficult field, and the fact that Cardi B was involved in cardiology, which, of course, she wasn't, but that's beside the point. I'm so I'm so glad she brought so much information forth in the field. Um, let's see, anything else I want to add to this? Uh, nope, that's good enough for me. So thank you very much for listening. This has been Billy the Moron And Sand. this has been Edmund... I have no idea what to label myself as. Scrivens <laughs> saying, be careful. Or else you might end up on the operating table and Cardi B will be there with the scalpel. Thank you and good night! <laughs> Fuck with me.